You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be doing the recap for the SmackDown Live pay-per-view Clash of Champions. Yeah. I said it right, right? You did. Okay. I guess I should eat my crow now, right? For calling it possibly the worst pay-per-view of the year. Oh, well. But then I changed my tune when we got to the end. Well, yeah, because the build was terrible, but that's just because SmackDown's terrible. Yeah, not really going to argue with that one. Yeah. But they put on a good show. But it, it just doesn't make sense. I know. You can put on a good pay-per-view and... A subpar weekly show. Uh, if that's honestly being nice, yeah, nah, fair enough. Yeah, I almost turned it off two weeks ago. What SmackDown itself? Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, because that was the day, I, the the night that I didn't watch it at all. Yes, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, good pay per view, quality stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we kicked off the pre show with uh, Mojo Rawley versus Zack Ryder. Yes. So you know what I really liked about this. What did you really like about it? The last time we had a team break up and them feud, mm-hmm. and it was complete garbage. Oh, it was, it was bad. Enzo and Cass. Yes, it was bad. And that's why, you know, it just kind of gave you the idea of, oh, God, the last time we saw this, it was terrible. And then this one, it was like, oh, wait, these guys can actually wrestle each other. Mm-hmm. Well, in all fairness, that team, uh, Enzo and Cass, was not made for them to be competitive with each other. True. It was a mouthpiece and a big guy. So, and. It's not really fair to put them up against each other. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was, that was but a they did it. Idea. Yeah. They did it multiple times. Yep. But uh, yeah, we both called it. Mojo went over. Oh yeah, there's no reason for Zach to win. No. Um, he kind of got a little bit of a uh, second win, so to speak, mm-hmm. Zach, and then it just came crumbling down. Well, yeah, he got punched in the face. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the running punch but then when they showed that close-up of it it looked like he hit him and zach didn't react right away and then all of a sudden he's just like down yeah um but yeah mojo's definitely got a lot of intensity to him yeah the, um, I, I don't know how i feel about his new entrance music maybe it's just the it. entrance you'll get used to it no no you're no, no, talking no, about him like doing the football charge yeah it's, it's i weird. don't know it's weird it's i don't know you'll get used to it but his whole thing was uh Zack Ryder not showing any killer instinct, right? Because yes, he cut he, a promo about Zack. Yeah, well, he made that video that he posted on his Twitter, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but he kept on going on about the intensity. Intensity, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a, Mojo you know, is intense. He so, so. definitely excels in that department. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that was good for a pre-show match. It's certainly yeah, a good match. Absolutely. And, and they, it drew you in you kind of actually wanted to see what they were going to do yeah it wasn't just a throwaway it, you, there was actually like emotion behind what mm-hmm. was going on it's true it wasn't okay just go out there there's no story yeah. it's not all high as first matt hardy mm-hmm. yeah or the SummerSlam match where there was like 15 people in the audience oh yeah yeah yeah. but yeah so we opened the show with the triple threat for the United States Championship. I almost said the Intercontinental Championship. That would be the wrong show. It would be. So uh, this was Baron Corbin defending against Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler. Yes. So I noticed in the beginning of the show, the uh-huh. crowd was super hot. Oh, And it yeah. just drastically went downhill. Yeah. Well, the the main event, they didn't really care about too much. Not really. Yeah. And yeah, well, we'll get into well, it. Well, in all fairness, the... Probably the best two matches were the first two matches. I would agree with that. So, mm-hmm. so it, it's not exactly a huge surprise that that happened. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so we I was looking at the predictions. We only differed on one match. Yeah, and it was this one. And it was we this one. <laughs> and we were both wrong. So it was pretty funny. Um. But yeah, the only... Uh, this match started out quick uh-huh. because it was Ziggler and Rude working each other. And then... Well, they were they double teaming were, yeah, they Corbin. Were, yeah, they were. He he was out on the outside, right mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. And then once Corbin got in and started slowing down the pace, I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, here yeah. we go. But then everything because, flowed really well. Well, because they there was like a a back and forth between okay, when Corbin was like beating up on a guy, it was slow, mm-hmm. and then Ziggler and Rude were taking over. It was you know more Moves stuff the going pace. on. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um. There was a point in time where it looked like Rude was going to win. He hit it. This was the finish I expected. Yeah. Um, And then... Yeah, Rude hit Dolph with the glorious DDT. Yeah. Corbin came in the ring, went to throw Rude outside of the ring, 
but actually Rude reversed it and threw Corbin out of yeah, the ring. So. Cor- uh, Rude went for the pin, and Corbin grabbed his leg and pulled yeah, him out, right? pulled him out of the yeah. ring. So, yeah, I kind of figured yeah, that was going to be the end there. That, that would have been an easy, like, stopping yep. point, and it would have worked. Mm-hmm. Also, technically, Corbin throwing Rude out and taking the pin himself would have That would have made complete that, sense. While it would have been something that we've seen a lot recently, mm-hmm. it would still... It would have you know, worked. Yeah. That's fine. Um, but what ended up actually happening yeah. was that um, Corbin got back into the ring and mm-hmm. tried to hit an end of days on... Uh, on rude, rude and yep. while he's in the middle of setting him up before it Dolph hits a zigzag on corbin and pins him that was cool it was a cool spot yeah yeah because you could like if you weren't really paying attention didn't know exactly what was going on because i like i kind of like was distracted by something mm-hmm. and then i look and then i saw it happen but i didn't know what was happening <laughs> can't process it. yeah so i'm like who did what and then they showed the replay yeah and, and the crowd went crazy yeah it was weird. It was it was good because yeah. I, I was surprised. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I was like, holy crap, they they made Ziggler win. Yeah, which was surprising. Well, yes, and then when you think about it, like, uh, maybe he does need a reason to uh, stick around. It's true. So. Um, and, and well, unless he's, like, a transitional champion mm-hmm. and they actually keep it on for a little while and, you know, have him defend it on, like, yeah. Corbin. <laughs> he, what, had one defense? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, because he wanted a Hell in a Cell. If, uh, there was no title match at Survivor Series, and mm-hmm. I think he might have given AJ a rematch. The rematch but that I don't was even it. know if AJ did yeah, the rematch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was the next night. Okay. Um, so if he holds on to the title, it could be a good. That's fine. Good yeah. for him. Give him something to do. Yeah. Uh, and I hope that he drops the stupid entrance thing. It's really dumb. I don't know why he went back to that after the list. Yeah, because like, I could have swore they stopped doing he it. He did. And then all of a sudden, last yeah, the, uh, last night they did it again. Hmm. I don't really understand Weird. why. Weird. Um, yep. So uh, up next we have the first of unfortunately many backstage segments. Yeah, got to um, fill time somehow. This one is weird because uh, Daniel Bryan's in, in the back, and <laughs> one has, of the producers or whatever brought him a referee shirt. It's like this won't fit. Am I twice the size? <laughs> And then you see Shane walk up, and he's got the My stupid... My shirt fits. Yeah, it, it's obviously a size too small. Oh, yeah, of course. And then you see his stupid buttons, and the white and the black, and mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, that's terrible. And then I realized they replayed when he was the ref at SummerSlam, and I was like, oh, it was the same thing. Oh, yeah, it was just as a different... Yeah, because um, yeah, it said Clash Champions on yes. the back. But they, what they should have done is had him wear the ref shirts like the real ones mm-hmm. when, uh, when he was younger. Right. Because then he looked like a nerd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nerd yep um anyway shane comes over and uh he wants to make it clear that he's the one in charge yes even though that they're both referees he's gonna be taking care of everything Mm -hmm. um and then daniel bryan goes on and says that the reason why i made myself one of the referees is because i'm not sure of your motives and i'm not sure that you can you know put on a uh, fair match yeah and then Shane gets a little upset. He gets butt hurt and leaves. Yeah. Uh, so. Then we have a Corbin interview. It was Dasha, right? I believe. Yes. And then uh, she asked him about him squandering his opportunities. Mm-hmm. He was not very happy. I didn't squander anything. Mm-hmm. I got cheated. cheated. Yep. Then he took garbage can and threw it at the door. Yep. Walked away. Mm-hmm. And that brought us to the second match. The it's not really a fatal. I guess it was a fatal four way. Uh, tag team match. Well, that's exactly what it was. Yeah, but it was a little different than your typical one. Why? I guess because you had four men in the ring at all times. Yeah, but it was still a fatal four, four teams. Fine. <laughs> that's the exact definition. Yeah. I guess anyway, it should have been a fatal four way tornado tag. It would have made a lot more sense, <laughs> but it would have it been. It didn't a, matter. It was it w- chaotic. Yeah, throughout I was going to say whole it thing. would have been more chaotic yeah. if they did that. Yeah. So we got to uh, hear. The 12 Days of Rusev, again. In its entirety. Yes. And then, unlike Elias, when Aiden English asked if, he, if they want an encore, everybody was oh my super God. excited. The they reaction were elated. that Rusev got <laughs> was Fantastic. insane. And he was so happy, too. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very often that heels get face you know, reactions. Not to like that, that extent. No. That, I, I do not remember the last time anybody got that kind yeah. of actual... Because it was not, like, pumped up 
kind of loud. Oh, it was like loud. legitimately like yeah. echoing throughout the building loud. Um and it was it was nuts. It was. Um anyway. So. Yeah, this was uh kind of what we expected. A little mm-hmm. bit of a craziness going on all oh, the time. Throughout the match. Yeah, yeah, it was just people everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um it was a nasty. It looked nasty when Chad Gable hit Aiden English with the uh, with a German suplex, and it looked like he landed on his head. I'm but talking then, about the one that was happening towards the end. Yeah, of Yeah, toward the end of the match. Yeah, yeah. it was like a little. But delay. then they showed a different replay, and I was like, "Oh, he landed on his shoulder. He's fine." Yeah, because he felt went out of the ring, stood up, and <laughs> right down. Uh, but yeah, there was. Um, they did a really good job of making it convincing that this was like a competitive oh match. anybody could have won yes yeah, that they definitely um, did that because there were spots where uh rusev looked like he was gonna win when he had biggie in the accolade toward yeah, the that, end right that sequence at the end where it was i think it was rusev um well it was rusev day had mm-hmm. control yes because aiden english actually looked like he was going to pin mm-hmm. um i think it was kofi it might have been. Um, because Rusev took out him with, like, the roundhouse kick. Oh, right, yes. And then he hit him with, like, a... It's like a, an exploder, I think? I, I, like don't that. Remem- I don't remember um, what it was. He hit something, and I'm like, wow, he's he might actually they do might it. He might win this. And then yeah. that, at that point, Rusev took control, and that's when Big E came into the ring, mm-hmm. and then that's when he got the, yeah. the upper hand. I'm like, yep. oh, my God, they're actually going yep. to do it. And then uh, Gable and Benjamin had control of the oh, match. Yeah. Well... Gable came in and he just, just destroyed super, everybody. Suplexing everybody. Oh my god! He's so sh- well. That was the because Biggie was going to tap, but yeah. then Gable grabbed Rusev from behind yeah, he and hit him with a, just oh, deadlift German yeah. suplex. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. crazy. It, it was it was it was great. And then he did it on eight in English, and it wasn't as impressive. No. <laughs> um, but then eventually, uh, it was um, Gable and I don't remember if it was Jimmy or Jay. I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Christine yeah, he, will get mad at me. He he went he went for uh, a German on one of the Usos, mm-hmm. and the other Uso grabs him by the legs, yeah. pulls him over. That kind of throws Gable off guard. Gets a super kick. He gets knocked down. They hit a frog splash, and, and that, that was, was the it. actual finish yep. of the match. Makes sense. Um, this was a very fun match. Yeah, there was uh, a lot of like we said, a lot of fast paced action. Uh, you never knew what was going to happen, or you didn't know exactly what was going to happen. I honestly thought that Rusev could have won, and then and it was he, maybe yeah. mm-hmm. Gable and um, yeah, Benjamin. They, but well, that's the thing they've they've kind of changed their the way they've built up matches because a lot of times in the past, like it, it just felt like you knew when the end was going to happen. Sometimes now it seems you, like they kind of go past that. Yeah, sometimes like. It depends on the... Because it feels like more of the NXT style where you had, like, the, the tag uh, teams specifically. Honestly, like, a lot of the NXT singles matches happen like that, too. That's true. Where it's like, okay, this is the ending, mm-hmm. and then it just... It's a f- not actually yeah. what happens. Uh, even uh, I watched the NXT from a couple of weeks ago with uh, Gargano versus... Oh, uh, uh, Cassius? Yeah. Yeah. And that match was... It was a good match, actually. The road to 205. <laughs> <laughs> eh, honestly it's my new, new storyline you have to get cassius down and to get into the oh, 205 that's, that's live division yeah okay i was gonna say because gargano <laughs> would be good in that division he'd excel um and it would be it would raise the the bar it would raise the bar yes yeah. um but, but yeah anyway enough but yeah, about the, nxt yeah the tag the tag team division on smackdown so fantastic good. it is the it, spotlight it, of smackdown yeah they it's so they have so much going it's so for them. stacked i but l- hopefully the they the don't reaction, have a superstar shake up and screw no, it no, all no, up no, again no. the reaction that rusev got would help him and maybe make him a singles competitor again with aiden english As his manager yeah, yeah absolutely because there's no reason for aiden english to wrestle <laughs> it, we're not missing anything by not having him no um so if they put him in like the u.s title picture Mm -hmm. that'd be great yeah give him the u.s title again you know he was a good u.s champion so that's true or have him one of aj's opponents i I could live with that yeah well we've never got that match that they were going to have to be the uh last member of the survivor series it's true so i I could definitely 
I, you, you want to see good things for Rusev because he's so good and he's he, so he gets himself over in everything. Yeah, he, there's never been a point in time where the fans weren't at least somewhat behind mm-hmm. him, and it's weird because he has such a uh, like a, a it's not a strange gimmick, but it's like a gimmick that is designed it's to create one dimensional and yeah, exactly. And it's kind of like gender, but not to that extent. Yeah, but everybody loves him. I mm-hmm. guess because he says funny things sometimes. <laughs> it's Cold true. fish. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you threw him with the New Day and that helped. Yeah. There's just good stuff. Yeah. Um, so up next, we had the Women's Championship match. Yes. With Charlotte defending against Natalia with pretty much everybody else beside Becky Lynch's Lumber Jills or Lumber Jacks, whatever, yeah, whatever outside of the ring. Um, crowd couldn't give two hoots. Yes. Yeah. Well, this was a, a mess. This this match was a bad excuse to have all the women. Yeah. On the it, show. It doesn't it really make any was. sense. You had said it earlier. Um, it should have just been a six woman tag match plus the title match. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to create, which which they didn't do by the way, they created no future storylines. This was you, liter- nothing accomp- got accomplished. At, literally nothing except for Natalia at the end. <laughs> yeah, but that that's not accomplishing anything. That's Telling, just kind yeah. of confusing. Um, because we'll f- hopefully find out on Tuesday what the hell that was about. Mm, yeah, because it was well, I will get through the match yeah. first. But um, because it was basically the story of let's knock the other person out of the ring so the mm-hmm. lumberjacks can beat him yes. up. Yeah, and they that's pretty it. much just targeted Charlotte. And then they threw Natalia back in. Mm-hmm. And well, the one time she went out by Naomi, Naomi took advantage. And, yeah. But it was stupid because you would have Charlotte go out on one side and then all six women attack her and you just, the camera pans over and you just see Naomi just standing there. And it's just like, well, I get it. You're not going to go one on six, but. Yeah. You're also not on my side. Right. I don't leave my side. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, just weird. But, uh, what was it? The, uh, but the match itself wasn't bad. No, 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 no. It wasn't bad. It was but, just overbooked. Yeah. But, you know, that's to be expected. Yeah. This match and the uh, other tag match coming up later yeah. on. So, but it just, it didn't make any sense to do it like that. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. You want to create a, an aura of, you know, ex- like, I don't know, dominance with the <laughs> Riot Squad. Yeah. But you didn't do anything with it. Um. Mm-mm. Tamina just uh, threw Liv Morgan down really hard at one point yeah. on the outside. Um, and there was like a scuffle. Every single lumberjack was on the outside, mm. like by the announce table. And then Carmella grabs her. Oh, the briefcase. Yeah, right, brief runs into and, the ring. Because Charlotte was out on her own. I guess they were all beating up on Natalia. Yeah. Um, I think that was it. See, that doesn't make any sense, though, because you would think it would make more sense the other way around. Or were they both in the ring? No, yeah. they definitely weren't both in the ring. Um, yeah, because th- that's right, because Carmella went in the ring and hinted that she was going to cash in, and then all of a sudden all six women came in and then migrated to the other side yeah. and started battling out there. Yeah. And that's when the finish so, happened, right? It was shortly thereafter. Yeah. Which... Oh, no, 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 no. That, well... Yeah, because they the like, opposite side. Yeah, yes. and then they were brawling out, and then it and then that's when the Charlotte ring. hit the moon salt on everybody. Every, well, or except she didn't hit anybody. She landed in front of. Oh everybody. yeah, she didn't. The, <laughs> Lana's reaction was the best because she was clearly nowhere Over near here. her, yeah. and she just like <laughs> fell to the ground. Yeah. Um. And at that point, she hit the moon salt. Natalia grabbed her and threw her into the ring post, and then into the ring. Mm-hmm. Went for the sharpshooter. Um, and then, uh, I guess she reversed it, right? Yeah. Well, Charlotte went, um, just kicked her mm-hmm. and then she hit the, the figure, figure eight. F- yeah. Figure four. And then and she, figure um, eight. she uh, tapped, tapped out. out. Yeah. So, and then we got a very interesting promo by Natalia after the match. Yeah. She was, I guess, interviewed asking about her loss. Yeah. yeah. And then she was complaining that Charlotte you cut corners by using her family name. Yeah, that made no Did you sense. watch Talking Smack afterward? No. Uh, well, it was funny because Charlotte was on there and uh, Renee had asked her about that. And she was like, it's kind of hypocritical considering she's a, uh, a she uses the heart name as yeah. well. But anyway, then uh, Natalia was saying that all the women turned their back on her and WWE Universe turned her ba- their backs on her, so she's going to turn her back on them. Yes. And then stomped out of the ring. And, well, and she got out of the ring and then and she started, started crying. crying. Yeah. 
So immediately I'm thinking, was that her retirement match? No. It but, was. I saw stuff online about it. Oh, it's just just said it, was, it wasn't meant to be a retirement promo, just a heartfelt or some sort of, uh, I don't know. It, it was strange. Yeah. Because, you know, for... You haven't watched any of the Total Divas this season, right? No, oh, yet. my God. <laughs> you have to watch it. For, for her, the crowd has been kind of behind her. You know what I mean? Like, she gets booed, obviously, but, you know, she's supposed to get booed. Yeah. Um, because you know, if she was really that, I guess hated, she would have she would get much worse, or mm-hmm. you know, it would be more obvious. So it, she's not doing a bad job as a heel, so it's kind of hard to no. guess where they're going, what they're going with here. Well, so we've been trying to figure this out for the last eight months, maybe yeah. longer. Yeah. A woman on SmackDown, it just it's ever true. since the Superstar shakeup, yeah. So hopefully on Tuesday we'll have some light shed on this situation. Yeah, hopefully. And uh, so, yeah. Yep. So then we go backstage, and Dasha is trying to interview the gender. The gender. The gender. And the Bollywood sings her outside his dressing room. And, she, the you know, Bollywood sings. they say he can't be bothered because he's meditating or deep meditation, whatever. Yes. But they say that. He's going to have no problems tonight that he doesn't even need their help. And mm-hmm. then Dasha asked, so you guys aren't going to be at ringside? <laughs> or whatever she said. Yeah. And he, they said, I don't remember what they said. but they Well, they're said, like, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. You'll, you'll, you'll just have ha- to watch and see. That's yeah. what they said. Yes, yes, yes. Which is dumb, but whatever. Yeah. And then we got the squash match of the night. Yeah. <sighs> the Fashion Police versus the Bludgeon Brothers. Yeah. Um, kind of expected. Well, yeah, it's funny because I was like, okay, this will be a somewhat competitive match, and then I remembered who was in the match. Yeah. Because while they are probably one of the more entertaining acts on SmackDown, they are not known to be good wrestlers. All right. Well, I should say not booked to be yeah. good wrestlers. This match probably went three minutes, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, and, and it went almost exactly how all the other squash matches went. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So do you think now that... Breezango is going to try and get the Ascension to avenge them, or do you think the Ascension is just going to try to do it on their own? Um, I think it's more likely that they do it on their own. Yeah. And so are we just going to get like a bummed out Breeze and Fandango? Yes. They're going to be sad on Tuesday, or Fandango's going to be like, I told you it was a bad idea. <laughs> oh, Tully. Um, so uh, that's going to happen, and then the Ascension are going to offer their services. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to get squashed as well. And then... <laughs> well, then you got to hope that at this point you throw... You give something else for the Bludgeon Brothers yeah. to do. Either go after the titles or you know, make a feud happen yeah. with like the new Or Day. they say it wasn't them. Because <laughs> <laughs> you still got to put over Brizango somehow. What are they going to do after this? Well, they just need to... Well, if they slowly drift away from it you don't need to give them anything but they still need something to do no they can continue the fashion files They're, they can mm. find something else i guess to that's do. true it's not hard they manufactured this so far that's true no one knew it was supposed to be them it was just yeah yeah you know i mean there was tons of different things they could have done and they did this for like six months yeah that's true it's a long time mm-hmm. so and honestly i think <clears throat> a blow off of being afraid of what happened is better than no yeah oh yeah no yeah, resolution no, at they, all. Yeah, they, yeah they did something so but, um yeah but yeah i'm sure they'll come up with something mm-hmm. hopefully the the bludgeon brothers move on to an actual feud so yeah. they're not just squashing people forever yeah, i know because the two of them are great together they really they really never should have stopped yeah, being just, a tag team the only problem is They've gotten down the squash matches now where you're going to be able to string together a full match and still make them look dominant. Have you never watched Luke Harper wrestle? I have. He's, He's very great. good. I know. <laughs> but <laughs> Eric you know. Rowan is not bad either. No, Eric I, Rowan is just not a good character. I know. But so. you have four high-quality teams on SmackDown that you don't want to make them look bad. Here's what you do. Mm. Take Rusev out of the tag division. Have them feud with the New Day. 
Uh, yeah. Give Shelton Benjamin and uh, Chad Gable to the Usos. Mm-hmm. Have them go over. And then, you know, and figure something out for the yeah. Bludgeon Brothers. We'll but say. You, you absolutely could do the New Day against the Bludgeon oh, Brothers absolutely. for a yeah, yeah, yeah. long time. Yeah, that's true. They could get away with it. And they will if they chose to do that. Well, let's see. That'll, that'll be the WrestleMania. This match. is our problem. They have something to build on, and who knows if they're going to do anything with it. Well, it's it. true. Because, you know, the SmackDown because... could just shut down completely starting on Tuesday. <laughs> it's who the true. hell knows? <laughs> We still have another month before the next pay per view, so we're just gonna play a recap show from the last year. <laughs> oh man! So we go backstage, and Dasha is interviewing Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, uh, and, and yeah, asking about Shane's motives. Yeah. And uh, they say that well, Daniel Bryan's on our side because you know he's gonna make sure it's a fair fight tonight. Mm-hmm. And then she asks them about what happens if they lose, and it's you know because. Their jobs are on the line. That's a great reaction. And they, they were just, just like, oh, how could you ask? That? Like, they didn't say anything, yeah. but they just had the face like, how could you ask that question? Yep. They looked at her in disgust, and then they walked away. It was good. Yeah. It was funny. Yeah. So that brought us to the uh, tag match with Shinsuke Nakamura and Randy Orton versus Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and Daniel Bryan, and Shane McMahon is the referee. You want to hear something funny? Huh. I kind of wish there was the main event. It would have been it, the way it yeah. ended. It would have been a good way to end the show. It's true. Like, I would have been fine with it. It didn't matter. Yeah, because just because it, it's the most relevant storyline mm-hmm. right now. So, are they trying to turn Shane into Stephanie? I don't know. Because they're really doing a really muddy job of the story. And especially the endings. Fans are like, I don't know who we're supposed to chant for. Yeah. Well, obviously the answer is Daniel Bryan <laughs> because know. he's on the heel side. No, I know, but the they, heel side is the side they that's were, the good side. Oh, now, apparently. It's so dumb. Yeah, it really doesn't make any sense because Shinsuke is getting dragged down to the bad guy side <laughs> because Orton obviously is trying is you know working as a heel, but he's technically the face. The face. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. And they're uh, Owens and Cena are. Fighting against atrocities, so you know it's just it. It is the most yeah. ridiculous storyline I think we've mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. Not not off of like, like what's going on, but just the dynamic of the characters. Mm-hmm. It is just bizarre. It's something, yeah. So basically, anytime there was a pinfall in the beginning of the match, they would both <laughs> go down for the count, and then one would obviously be off. So we got to a point where they split the ring in half and said, "Shane, you have this side. Daniel, you have this side." Mm-hmm. Um, it it wasn't. It was a good match. It, it was just so over scripted. Yeah, there was a lot going on. And then Shane and Daniel couldn't keep their earpieces well, in. I noticed the, Shane. I didn't notice Daniel. Yeah, he kept playing with it and then ended up putting it in his pocket. The yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that that because Shane would like full out dive mm-hmm. onto the mat when he yeah. was going. But the crowd wasn't even into this match really either. But that's because there was too much going on. Yeah, it was hard to follow. Well, mm-hmm. not hard to follow, but it no, was but a little. Have the referees getting involved with the yeah. wrestlers mm-hmm. and everything like that. Yeah, there was a point in time where it looked like Daniel Bryan was going to beat the crap out of Shane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, I it guess was, yeah, it was a mess. The match was pretty much low key and then we went to the outside right and owens hit shinsuke with a frog splash onto the announce table well yeah at first they like like did a, like a back suplex onto mm-hmm. the onto the oh that's right yes table and then Sami Zayn's holding him onto the mm-hmm. table and owens uses his belly yeah. on and him. at this point is this when sammy was in the ring with orton and orton hits the rko yes so orton hits the rko on sammy Shane goes for the count, and Daniel Bryan is standing behind Shane. And as Kevin Owens is coming into the ring, he guess I guess he bumps Daniel Bryan. Well, it was it was a it weird, was a weird because why yeah. was Owens falling down? That was <laughs> the question. Because he w- he backed into, mm-hmm. into yeah, Daniel that's right. Bryan. He didn't go forward. Yeah. He backed into. So him. he hits Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan falls on top of Shane. Shane stops his count. Mm-hmm. Orton gets up. Shane's up. They're looking pissed because. Mm-hmm. Um, Owens st- wasn't into it, right? He was still on the ground at that point. Yeah. And then uh, they had a back and forth, and Sammy rolled up Orton, mm-hmm. and Shane hit one. No, did he hit one, two, and then pretended, and they stopped counting, right? 
Oh no. Okay. Well, well, what happened was there was um, before what you're talking mm-hmm. about happened. Um, they did a bunch of schoolboy pack, uh, small packages oh, right, right. over and, they and over back again. And forth. Yes, so Shane right. would count, count when uh, when Orton's pinning mm-hmm. Zane, and then Daniel Bryan would do it the mm-hmm. other other way, and then that stops, and then uh, Zane is able to roll up um, Orton, Orton again. Mm-hmm. Shane counts one, two, two and then and he then. stops counting. Yes. At this point in time, Daniel Bryan's furious. Yes. So they go shoving each other back and forth. Mm. And then, so they kind of have their backs to each other. And then Zane, or Orton goes for the RKO. Zane reverses it, rolls him up, and then Daniel Bryan hits a quick three count. Yes. And Shane realizes what happens. Yep. So he got what he asked for, mm-hmm. basically. Yep. Yeah. And then he did the yes thing, and the crowd was like, yeah, we're going to do the yes thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even during the match, uh, Owens kind of tried to start up a, a yep chant. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Uh, like I said, overscripted, but... It I, worked. They, they, it, it did work, but they still didn't get much accomplished. Oh, no, absolutely not. Because um, that's it's going to be a huge build. It, we got to figure out what the hell's going on with their story. Because right now, it's all completely up in the air. Well, all just, we know is that Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens still have jobs. Well. Yeah. That's the only thing that got established. True. But they did a good job building to it. They, oh, no, they, this was good. I know. Th- this was a good match. And, you know, it, when you look back, you know, was at least the matches that happened during the storyline are, are quality yeah. stories. But, um, yeah, that's true. I just just don't want more of the same crap. As long as they do something a little different, because that's what they've been doing. It's been all right. Just a little, little more, a little, a something, slow burn. Yeah, something small to change it up every single time. Because mm-hmm. it started with AJ versus Owens, and then it was Owens against Shane, mm-hmm. and then it was all these guys together now. Yeah, so it's all coming together. Yep. the The biggest, the biggest problem they had was Survivor Series. Yeah, because there was the two months in between Owens and Shane mm-hmm. and this. Had there been only a month between them, it probably yeah. wouldn't seem so muddied. Right, but I mean, they kind of made it work at Survivor Series. No, I'm not saying that it was it was um, it was bad what they did. Mm-hmm. It just slowed down. The, Their, yeah, I got, I got yeah. you. Because it probably would have flowed better if it went from this month or this happened to Hell and Cell, and then the next month this happened. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 That I got, would make I a lot more sense. Um, but up next, we had the main event. Yes. With AJ Styles defending his. WWE Championship versus Jinder Mahal. Yes. Maybe his last title shot. Um, hopefully. It could be. Yeah, hopefully. Could be. Um, the one was... thing I have to say before we get started, Jinder needs to do something about his hair. <laughs> it's <laughs> terrible. Because it looks fine when he comes out, and then it dries, and then oh, it looks okay. like he has an afro. And it just it just looks so weird. Yeah. Because it takes his, like, threatening physique and mm-hmm. appearance and just makes him look like a clown. A little bit. So, and that's that's all I have to say. That's it? Yeah. That's all you have that's, to say. That's, that's, that's that was the biggest thing I got mm-hmm. out of that match last night. Um, no. No, that's the biggest thing I've gotten out of Jinder over the last six months. I'm sorry. Well, AJ did what he does. He sold the hell out of anything that Jinder did. Mm-hmm. Jinder worked on the ribs. The entire match, yep. so it gave Jinder something to do. Yeah, he looked—he didn't look bad throughout the match. Mm-hmm. Well, also Jinder uh, had his leg worked on too. Yes, in the beginning, that was, that mm-hmm. was a big part of yes. the, the story. There was a few points in time where he kind of just randomly stumbled. It, it seemed a little like forced. Yeah, but, no, I gotcha. Um, but it was a good match. Yeah, it for, was decent for uh, for a Jinder match. I mm-hmm. must say, there was wow. no Brock versus AJ. But no, but you know. Yeah, and so, the Singh brothers really didn't get involved too much. Just nice. one point. Yeah. Well, they would just like grabbed at yeah. AJ's legs at one point mm-hmm. or something like that. That's about it. Yeah, and then AJ went on the outside and hit a style a phenomenal forearm onto the guy, one of the uh, Sings, and then hit the other one with the uh, Styles Clash. Yes, um, Jinder went for a Styles Clash. He did, and that was weird. Yep. And then, but then a- AJ did try to hit one on him, but that mm-hmm. one would work. He's way too tall. <laughs> Wait. His head would have been dragging on the mat. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, Jinder hits the Coloss. Yep. AJ kicks out. I think he was it, the first one to kick out of the it, Coloss. It, it wasn't a pin right away, though. 
There was a couple it, seconds. It doesn't in matter. It. No, but I mean, it doesn't make it as. At least they can say, "Oh, hey, he wasn't able to get the pin on right away." I don't think they would say that though. You know what I mean? I, like I understand that being a uh, a Let's case see. in yeah. the past. Mm-hmm. This situation, I think it's AJ kicked out of the class. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, it's like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, there was no doubt in my mind that Jinder was going to win. You mean lose? No, Jinder was going to win. You thought Jinder was going to win? No, no, no. There was no... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I'm, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm like, you said it <laughs> twice. So I'm starting to think that that's what you actually meant. No. Uh, yeah. Um, AJ was going to win. That's what I meant. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, obviously, that was the logical thing. But it, and then again, at Backlash, there was no reason why Orton should have lost. That's true. So... Anyway, uh, AJ ends up applying the calf crusher. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jinder looks like he's going to tap. He, like, snakes out of it, yeah. and then AJ is able to roll him back into it. Yep. And well, then... you're starting to get close to the ropes. That's oh, okay, that's what it was. So that's over. when he rolled yeah. him back. And then um, and then he taps, and that was the match. That was it. Yep. There's a positive note at the end of the pay-per-view. Right? I guess. Well... <laughs> You know, gender one it survivor series that was just that what ended. the hell did they just book yeah and then helena cell was owens winning so technically the good guy won mm-hmm. um and then i don't remember what, what the well, no. review before that was yeah. it's a long time ago yeah i don't remember no mercy was there's no no no, no mercy, mercy was, was raw. raw yeah i don't remember i don't either Oh, well. That matter. was their October pay-per-view. Yeah. Hell in a Cell was their October pay-per-view. It was SmackDown's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, September I mean. had to be something. I have no idea what it was. Or no, they no didn't Mercy skip, was, right? Maybe they did. Yeah. Maybe there was nothing between SummerSlam and Hell in a Cell yeah. for... Yes, whatever, okay. We had that chain, yeah. Let's, let's, let's stop wasting time. Okay, All very right. good. But, uh, yeah, so overall, good show. Better than expected. Yes, because of the crap build. Yes, but... That has been our, or this has been our Clash of Champions review. Yes. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.